We've got an ITL for you, a brand new one. Uh, got a cool guest in Batter's Box, and our guest segment has got a real game changer in it. Stay tuned. You know where you're at. Pensado Sports. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Pensado's Place this week. I'm sitting here with one of my buddies, Claudio Quene. We're going to team up in the batter's box, Herbert. Absolutely. And, uh, you, you get good at this, Herb. I like this. I'm going to start Thank using you, that on my <laughs> And um, uh, Alex, a kid, I can't wait for them to hear this. We did this uh, actually a few days ago, and uh, I'm already applying some of the things I learned about that. That was a great time spent. That's pretty cool. Claudio, C-L, audio. Wish my name was like that. <laughs> Pen sodomy. It doesn't quite work. Nah, it's not Works working. Me, well. <laughs> is he allowed to speak before a segment? He absolutely. Okay, good. Yeah. Just checking, just making sure. This is this is a free week where you get licensed this week. Yeah. Drew uh, Drew's back from Hawaii. He is. Yeah. Absolutely. He's wearing all his little hats. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Drew is going to be the star in ITL. I heard that. Yeah, so I can't wait to see it. That's, that's going to be Zan's closet. That's where I got this from. <laughs> Zan's <laughs> closet. Zan is in town. Oh, that was oh, cool. I, yeah. Hey, Zan, if you're listening, man, <laughs> Skype. Uh, Skype. Let's let us Skype you in, my friend. Um, Am I forgetting anything? No, nah, we got a little bit of stuff to do, which is the regular stuff. Throw our screen up, Will, if you would. Um, all your comments, most welcome. Hit us at Facebook. Hit us at uh, Twitter, as you usually do. Um, in our corner office is our well-known CJ, and also this week's star of ITL, Mr. Drew Adams. Uh, and obviously, we want to say hello to our guys, our strategic partners, our buddies, Vintage King, Hey, Vintage King. I think Ooh, Alex yeah. is in the chat room. Alex is here today? Alex is in the chat room to help out with their questions and stuff. So, um, we're, we're chock full this week. Let, let, let's get to it. You, you want to introduce our ITL? Or, yeah. Um, or you want to talk about your favorite Kings of Leon song? Oh, man. Thanks huh. for bringing that up. My pleasure. Um, um, I just fell in love with, this, with the new Kings of Leon song. Uh, back down south, I think it's the real title. Uh, back down south, it's just being from the south. It's just it just made me homesick. First time I heard it, now I keep playing it over and over and over again. And then I'm working for Richard Williams, uh, the the dude that was instrumental in getting them and Paramore cool. into the forefront of our uh, national consciousness. Very interesting. That sounded like a little herb phrase, didn't it? Well, I slipped it under the table to you. <laughs> <laughs> you had out to Richard. Man, go check out this new Kings of Leon. This, uh, if you're hip to Bob Lessett, this is exactly what Bob has been talking about for a while. This is this is just a great song. I love this song. But now to our own Bob Lessett's, Drew Adams. Drew Adams. <laughs> Drew Lessett's. <laughs> Coming up <laughs> while we tee up ITL uh, so we okay, can get to it. Let's, let's run it, Will. What's up, people? Uh, Drew Adams here. Uh, Larrabee Studios, Studio A. I got a session that I got set up for Dave uh, so he can get it done in the box at his house, at his home studio, uh, Vibrant Street Studios. Basically, what I'm going to show you right now is the rundown of setting up a session uh, from, from the client to presenting it to Dave. My job is to simplify it, dumb it down, do everything I can to make it, you know, almost paint by numbers, just make it as simple as possible, all the way down to color coordinating, uh, breaking the sections down to uh, drums, music, uh, and vocals, but all subcategorized as far as vocals, lead vocals on top, which I'll show you right here. This is all, I've, I've just got finished uh, doing it, and uh, basically here's the verse lead, what I'm highlighting here and everything corresponding to it in orange. Basically the rundown is, I don't know if I already said it, but vocals on top, drums, music. That's how every session's set up. No matter how it comes to us, we set it up the same way. So it's the same thing to Dave. Okay, so lead vocals on top, boom, in orange. Any like random vocals, you know, stutter edits and vocal effects and whatnot in the same section as the lead vocals but as its own corresponding group. And then we have what is the pre-chorus here. I'm highlighting in a lighter purple. 
and a lot of these a lot of these uh, harmonies within this pre-chorus were jumbled around and whatnot. And uh, I basically put high harmonies together, mid harmonies together, anything, all these harmonies that are uh, you know two, four, six part harmonies. I put them together, low with low and high with high, and so forth and so on. And as far as color coordinating, this is pretty much standard. Male vocals are usually in orange. Uh, females are hot pink. So we have this pre-chorus in like a light purple, uh, but hook lead and hook BGs, all corresponding things, are always in dark purple. This section here is actually like the hype up part, the tag of the song. The song is called Opera. So that's this portion of the song. So we have it from what's highlighted, that's the tag. Here's the hook. Hook vocals, all harmonies in place. Pre-chorus, all harmonies in place, and leads and random vocals. So from there, go down to the drums. Drums are always highlighted in yellow. It's always the same corresponding priority-wise as far as kick, snare, high-end perks, um, as far as cymbals and uh, hi-hats and what have you. All those are in priority, kicks first, snares, and, and so on and the toms and anything else that's, you know, random drum wise, it, it's at the end, it's at the bottom. And then it's all followed up by the sub, by the bass. This song actually has two different basses. Looks to be like a, uh, like a chorus bass here and a, a burst bass there. These are the synths here in hot pink. There's a lot of synths going on and these, it's all the same. It's as far as priority goes. Whatever is happening most common throughout the track gets top priority. It's uh, top of the list. So these stabs are going throughout the whole song. So they're top of the list. And this is, uh, I think this is like the four on the floor part that's pretty, pretty huge in the song. Get it? So moving on to that. Um, so those are all the synths, these, these hot pink section here. Random effects throughout. They're, they're synths, so they're still with the synth section, but they're just kind of random, and uh, so they're at the bottom. On to the strings. Strings in dark purple. Dark purple or light blue, depending. It really is. Sometimes it doesn't matter, but sometimes it does. Uh, as far as right now, we're going to stick with purple, this purple thing we got going. There's one section of the song which is all dubstep, so I made it an obvious orange so Dave can recognize it. And then all like random sound effects and what have you, they're at the bottom. They get mixed they get mixed in last. And that's pretty much that's pretty much how it gets set up. Oh also I like to make all the inputs inactive just because we don't we don't need any inputs unless Dave's gonna use some hardware inserts at his house and he can just reinactivate them or activate them, sorry. Um, by control option app will click and it'll get all the corresponding ones like the one twos like you'll see all the one twos come back. Let me see. But they're all going out one or two, no inputs running. Straight Apple S. Make sure you stay on the Apple S. How I label the song when I get it from a client, I do this at the beginning. I do this when I first started this, uh, setting this up. As I immediately bump up, bump up is saving as, save as a different name. That way if I have to ever go back to the original, <clears throat> it's, it's right from the client. There's no questions asked. Like, this is exactly what I got from you if there's every missing audio and whatnot like that. So, and we label the prep stage, DP prep, save. So I gotta find the, the BPMs of the song. This is at its default 120 right now. So I get the kick, option F, get it full screen, get it as tight as possible. Zoom in, R and T. Zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. I get it close as possible, arrow over, and close as possible here without obsessing over it, which I normally do. We got a uh, one bar loop going. Right? Okay. So, the vent, we can quick key it, but I'll just show you guys where to get it. Sorry, identify beat. So click one because it's just a one bar loop that I'm trying to find out the uh, the tempo of. Tap down to two. 
and hit OK. And it's telling me one, two, three point whatever for human error. Got it. It's 123, and we're going to move this. Double click, one, two, three. Bam. We should be on grid. F4 for grid mode. And we're close. Not as close as I would like it, but we're close enough. I'll usually zoom in and, and fine tune, but we're cool for now. So we got the tempo, and you guys could also set markers by hitting a uh, numeric key enter, or if you have a laptop, FN. I'm not going to go through it right now. You guys know how to marker your session. I'm going to import Dave's template now. There it is. And everything, uh, as far as this window is concerned, you want to make sure that this never says link. Um, it's not saying it's not giving me the option now. It's grayed out because I'm going. I'm within the same drive. I'm working. With. If it ever says link, you're running the risk of moving your audio or moving tracks or moving any type of data rather than copying. So you want to copy. And you want to make sure you maintain absolute uh, time code values always. And this section gets tricky sometimes. I'm gonna do uh, none, and you see how import unhighlighted itself, right? So I went to do not import. I don't know why it does that. I don't know why I w would not want to import some in the session import data window, but just make sure you re-highlight that because sometimes you, you'll be flying something in or you want to uh, import some session data and you'll, you'll do like a specific. You'll go none and then you'll just you know, pick one of these and then it'll take you off of, uh, import and you get screwed. Like, why is this not working? So we got Dave's references a David Guetta track and this session is to be mixed in the box but Dave's got analog gear at home that he's gonna put in like the Orville, the bass, the SD330, the Bricasti, so forth and so on. Um, he's also got this kick and snare chain that is a uh, in the box parallel compression. I'm gonna click none like I said before I have to in order to import this without Pro Tools bugging out on me right now. Yeah, for time's sake. But I just want to get you guys showing you the, the routing, of how everything gets routed at this point. So, what I, first thing I do is I inactivate all of these auxes. All these highlighted auxes here are what are uh, Dave's template uh, effects. So, why, why we keep it inactive is he, he activates them as he goes along, and uh, that way all of them aren't taking up voices in the session. Just so we can make sure all our routing is straight. Let me actually right click, rename, let's do main. I'm going to set the input of this. This is a, a random bus for right now, but I'm going to label it SIPT. And so we have this aux here, which is basically our stereo, our stereo bus. And I'm going to label that print. And I'm going to make this output of this. SIPT and set this to this print. So I have the master controlling the input of what goes here, this input, and then this aux working as our stereo bus going into our print track so we can record and make these uh, solo safe. Apple left click, sorry. Put the input on. And uh, this is basically so we can record our passes, our master passes, our, uh, our main passes, instrumentals, acapellas, and stems. And this has to be color coordinated, baby blue. Like I said, these are always, always the same. This is Dave's reference tracks. Dave likes to listen to, uh, like to listen to songs that he likes, just to get a feel for stuff, and also to make sure that he's competing volume-wise and gain staging and. You know, there's a lot of reasons to keep a reference uh, track while you're mixing, so it's it's best. He recommends it for me while I'm starting out and everything like that, so it's a good thing. And also a David Guetta track here, because this is a dance tune, and you want to make sure that you're doing as good, if not beating it, every time. So keep it as a reference. So as you can see, in Dave's template, all his effects are already routed to all effects. As you can see, what I'm pointing at right now, not what I'm actually highlighting. I gotta move these. This is uh, what I'm moving now is Dave's kick chain and snare chain within Pro Tools, which is pretty accurate to his uh, 
<clears throat> this analog kick chain, which is DBX, to the uh, to the pull tech. So we'll just keep this here, just in case he wants to use it. He doesn't use it every time, but just in case he wants to, he's got the option. Cool. From here down, they're all going to all effects. This is where everything's going to as far as our in-the-box routing. So, make you guys active because we need you and all going to the, uh, I'll show you real quick. All going to this print input here via, you know, master print. The track is controlling it. Boom. Uh, I got to make the inputs all corresponding. What I'm doing right now is shift option Apple. I'm holding it down. I could probably let go now, but um, basically, if you look, I made them all uh, corresponding, not the same. So 13, 14, 15, 16, blah, blah, blah. But I have to name these. So rename. It's going to be Vox. It's going to be Drums. It's important to label everything because you lose track when you deal with so many tracks. Music. And then all effects. Sometimes we do uh, Dave effects and client effects. We'll have, a, we'll have the all effects thing separated out into two different ones, but well, this will work for now. Now we got to route everything so it, it makes sense and it goes from this process here, the red tracks, to this process here. Right now I'm going to put all the, all the vocals routing through this particular aux here. It says all vox. Vox is short for vocals. Highlight all the vocals holding shift option and running this through my box bus. So all those are running through the box ox up there. All of these drums run through the drums ox. Sometimes we we uh, put the bass with the drums, sometimes we don't. Since there's two basses and it's kind of instrumental, I'm putting it with the music. So I'm highlighting all the music, even this dubstep section, and I'm routing that to the music buses. So, music, drums, vocals, effects. Effects, music, drums, vocals. If Drew did his job, we should be able to hear and see these meters moving because everything should be routed from these oxes to this stereo bus. Cool. There we go. Cool. At this point, in order to avoid any playback errors, the um, best thing to do is strip your silence. Rather than going in and fine-tuning and, and, and fading everything, I'll still put fades on, on all the vocals, but this will work for now. You can make me look cool by editing this. All right. So, you want to change your threshold to make about like 90 something because you, you don't want to cut off too much. And you can, you can gauge it by looking at the screen. You can see where these uh, meters are moving to. So, the duration, region start pad, you see it moving. You want to be careful because you don't want to cut anything off and make it longer there. So, hold your mouse here. And then scroll up and down with P and semicolon and click away. Taking away minor details that would take me an extra, you know, 45 minutes to an hour. That's pretty much the gist of it. Yeah, so happy mixing, y'all. Well, let's give a big round of applause for our in house oh, hey, CJ. Hey. 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 Stand up, take a bow, Drew. I'm going to rip my mic out. Okay. Uh, right, exactly. Okay, right, you right. stood up. They didn't know. Good, good job, Drew. Uh, good job, Drew. Cool. So hopefully lots of the information was imparted there. Oh, there's only one thing. That wasn't my session. That was Manny's session. Oh, well, <laughs> they still learned a lot. They probably yeah. learned more. <laughs> probably learned more. <laughs> probably yeah. learned more. <laughs> thanks, Drew. Next yeah, time, no use one of my sessions. Yeah. So uh, big thanks to Drew. Big thanks to Will for a job well done. Um, God, what... A couple weeks ago, we had a great time with our upcoming guest, huh? Alex? Yeah. I tell you what, I'd, I'd seen interviews with Alex. Of course, I've known him since the day he landed mm -hmm. on, the, on our continent. He, he came by the Larabee, and you could tell then the, the kid was going to skyrocket. But 
sitting in the room with him, talking to him, I learned a lot. And one of the things I'd like the engineers and the crowd to do is understand that you're listening to a producer, but he's got a degree in engineering. Absolutely. And uh, so I want you to, uh, the producers listen as a producer, the engineers listen as an engineer, because uh, our profession is, is the distinction between producing and engineering is gone. That, 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 doesn't, that doesn't exist anymore. Engineers need to have production chops uh, so they can understand what the producer is trying to do, and the producer needs to have engineering chops because engineering is now part of the production. Exactly, as we've said a hundred times. So, and also, you know, there's a to me as a sort of layman about it, there's a rare hybrid thing that happened with ours. One, we had a great hang, mm -hmm. right? And so for our audience, this doesn't happen a lot. You don't get access to this a lot to find somebody who comes from your background who also has experienced explosive growth. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just I saw a picture this morning of him and Bono together switching glasses because he's working on Bono on YouTube. So you're talking about also a guy who, and I give big shout outs to Gerald Thompson for hooking it up, for Ryan Bartlett, his, guy, sure, his yeah. guy, his digital guy who's been great, um, Mark Jordan, his management for, for allowing all yeah. this to happen. Yeah, thanks but, Mark, Mark Jordan. But part of what is interesting about this to me as a manager is that Alex approaches his career with real strategic thought. So a lot of people didn't see him coming. And before we knew it, he just had home run after home run. I mean, speak of home runs, love the way you love me. Love the way you lie. The, the, love, love the way you lie. That when, the, when, when she does that little high part, golly, it just, mm -hmm. just goes right into whatever part of my brain that decides if I like this or not. It mm -hmm. just kicks the crap out of that part Air, of my brain. Airplane. Airplane. I mean, just, and, and you'll see in the interview, there's, Coming just some, home, Dre. Yeah, there's just some seminal records. But, but what's interesting, so you don't get this matrix where you see all that stuff in one one person. We we and actually went to dinner a couple hours afterwards, and he was also really cool. Really cool. <laughs> so, I mean, really, really cool. cool. So uh, really cool. we we don't we don't want to gush a bunch. I, I don't know what you call above superstar. Maybe maybe game changer. I think he's a game changer. But yeah. I, most of all, he's a really cool guy. Why don't we get the interview okay. and we'll get out of this? Okay. One quick thing, E Man, Tricky Stewart, Alex the Kid. Go back and rewatch the first two, and listen as an engineer. You're going to learn a lot. And and by the way, this is part one of a two-part video of a two-part interview. So this is part one of Alex the Kid. Okay, roll it. Let's do Will, my friend Alex the Kid. <laughs> hey guys, yeah. you guys can applaud if you're going to yeah. be there and do something. Scream. <laughs> we now have a live audience. <laughs> Our show has grown. Thank you guys. Our show has grown. So. <laughs> okay, Nicki Minaj, Massive Attack, Herb. Mm -hmm. um, Keep going. Eminem, love the way you lie. Mm -hmm. Diddy, dirty money, come home. One of my favorites. Uh, Lupe, words, uh, words I never said. Dre, I need a doctor. Love the video. Love the song. Um, B O B, airplanes. Ridiculous. It'll be great when he starts working with really big name acts. <laughs> <laughs> my goodness. A couple of these songs um, changed my life, man. I'm telling you what. Um, changed mine too. I bet. <laughs> it, absolutely, absolutely. To to me, I, I kind of hear three components in what you do. I hear a, <laughs> I hear a, I hear like a, a hip hop component. You know, like a like a serious hip hop R and B component. Then I hear, um, like, like classic pop. Rock components, and then and then and then the lyric and melody component. And I've never heard anyone that can take those components and do each one of those three kind of forms of music um, the way you do with credibility. Like 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 your hip hop stuff is hip hop. Your pop stuff is pop. Your classic R and B stuff is classic. And we have radio stations that only play hip hop. Uh, from with you know the people from Texas, and we have other radio stations that only play pop. You know people from Minneapolis, but in England, the times I've been there, I was so envious because you guys, you know, you'll have a skiffle beat followed by a classical, followed by a, a authentic blues. I mean, right. uh, did, did that give you a head start with all this? Yeah, no, definitely. When you know, growing up, I kind of grew up in a really multicultural environment, and I think uh, that definitely helped influence where I went musically for sure. Um, I grew up in a school with like loads of different you know ethnic minorities and 
it just really helped. I'm, you know, my mum's white and my dad's black, mm -hmm. and but there was never any. That, that was never ever an issue. Like, mm -hmm. It was always just, you know, just the norm. Just life. Right. So, I think uh, America. I think it's getting a lot. It's changing yeah, a lot ooh, because wow. of the internet. Oh, yeah. I think the whole world's changing because people yeah. get to experience different cultures and you can really find different things on the internet. But um, I think when I first, even when, like three years ago, three or four years ago, when I first came here, like it was a li still a little bit more segregated. Like uh -huh. it was yeah. like R and B uh -huh. or like rock. There right. was no mixing, and I really wanted to just do something different. Like my <coughs> my whole thing is just doing something that hasn't tried, been done and try and you know, yeah, mix absolutely. mix things that haven't really been mixed before. So. Mm -hmm. Um, that was kind of the, the influence for everything I've been but doing. You, you kind of pioneered that uh, because I'm sure you ran into severe resistance when you first started playing the stuff I heard because it was, I think I might have even made the comment that, that, that it would be hard to find a format for some of that stuff at right. the time. And now, whew, now those tracks, you know. <laughs> you started to define it, really. Kind of, yeah. I mean, I think there was always people like Gerald. Gerald really uh, got on board early on. There was yeah. always people, and Dave, you know, Dave really listened to stuff early on and, like, embraced me and gave me good feedback. And, and there was people early on that really got it, and, you know, some people didn't. But right. I think that happens a lot when you're doing something a bit different. Absolutely. How do you talk Dr. Dre into putting strings and acoustic <laughs> pianos and acoustic guitars on a track? I mean... And then, and then, and then when he when he comes on, he's not laughing. He's digging it, right? right? And he's feeling it. That, that's, I mean, seriously, that's. I think that obviously that was a, a combination of me and Eminem kind of convincing him. But it wasn't. It didn't really need any convincing. It was more of a. Oh, um, it sounds so seamless. It sounds right. But he wasn't. He wasn't resistant to no, it. No, no. He was like, I went to Detroit. the th the thing. How me and Dre started working was M kind of introduced us, and then. Um, I got a call from Dre and like he was like, "Can you come to Detroit?" He was in Detroit with him working on 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 Detox, and uh, so I went down there and you know I had like a week to prepare, so I did some you know some some tracks and I got Skylar Gray who signed to me. Yeah. We kind of wrote some choruses and um, so we went down there and yeah, Dre was I was playing Dre some like kind of more hip hop kind of sounding tracks and he was like, you know, I can kind of do that myself. I want you for you, so like give me stuff that you would yeah, never play. That speaks me. to his genius right, right there. And I played him, you know, you know, I Need a Doctor. That was like the first track I played him with a hook on it and he just, you know. He was done. Right, M ran out of the room, like just like, <laughs> I know when M gets excited about something, like right, you right, can right. just tell in his face. He ran out of the room and started writing and, and Dre was kind of like this. Was that a conscious effort on your part to, to, to do those to, to approach music with that philosophy, or was it just organic and whenever you sit down, that's just what comes out? A kind of mixture of both. I think um, I definitely wanted to do something different. Like, and I was always, before I even kind of found this sound, I was doing other things. Like, even before like Four to the Floor was big out here, I was messing around with like making Four to the Floor more urban. Because we have something called Grime in the UK, where, yeah, it's, I love grime. Right, where it's kind of more urban, but it's still dance. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I was mixing that kind of sound with more American type sound. So I was doing different things. I've always tried to do different things and, mm -hmm. and I kind of stumbled up upon this. I really started like about two and a half years ago, three years ago, I really started getting into rock a mm -hmm. lot. Like just listening to it in my personal time. And I just thought, why don't I try and like, you know, do this and you know What's interesting about that, I didn't, didn't mean to cut you off, but yeah, you did. I of course I did. <laughs> I wanted to move the interview along. <laughs> Was um, yeah, Gerald, help me out, man. Yeah, I love the intensity of rock. And when right. I listen to what you do, there's an urgency in what you do, but you're also trying to push the envelope. Right. That's just mostly from your personal perspective. It, it's not a plan thing, is it? No, I mean, I think ultimately all the decisions I make are just based on feeling. Just instinct. Right. Yeah. And I, you can't really, like, you know, I went to school and did a degree in audio technology and stuff. and. Right. You can't teach. You, I think you can to a degree, but there's definitely elements that you can't. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I agree with you. Mm -hmm. And you just, it just, it's your personality. It's not like you can't teach someone to have a personality. They just, mm -hmm. everyone has a distinct personality, and it's how you get that across. I think school can really help you get that personality across in a really clear way, mm -hmm. but it can't give you the personality yeah, in the first go. place. So, yeah, that's a great point. Yeah. 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 I, I always tell my assistants, I can teach anybody how to get a great vocal sound. I just can't teach you what a great vocal sound is. Right, right. You just right. kind of have to know. Classic. Uh, a question that I, I was thinking about asking, and you've kind of already answered it, but is, is that part of, of your growth process now to integrate some, some more f musical forms into, the, into what you're doing now, one yeah, of them being rock? Definitely. Um, I think the foundation of what I do is always going to be hip-hop, just because I love those types of drums, hard mm -hmm. drums, and I feel like hip hop, the one of the reasons why I love it so much is because it embraces everything. With sampling and stuff, you can be sampling like exactly. 60s rock bands or mm -hmm. whatever. Like, So I love that element of it, and it can be anything. Mm -hmm. That's why I think it's so popular. But um, I definitely, I see it 
I definitely see a space for um, rock to come back on the radio in some form because mm -hmm. it's obviously been missing for a while. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just, I just, I'm really intrigued by like the really iconic bands of like you know the, the '90s and, and even the '80s, and you know I really feel like there's a place for them on radio. We just need to find Absolutely. how that lives. Why can't somebody? Uh, why can't somebody take a live drum kit? And make it hip hop. Why? Why? What's the What's the impediment there? It doesn't have to be a sample to be hip hop necessarily. Right. I mean, it seems like you could just go Wu Tang on it and just record <laughs> it poorly, and it'd sound great, right. you know. Well, actually, mm -hmm. the drums on Nani the Doctor, they're, they're live drums, mm. and it just I I chop everything up and then I process everything like a sample. Mm -hmm. But um, they're actually live drums. So. Mm. Oh, wow, that's mm. cool. I did not know that. Yeah. Mm. So um, and then a lot of my drums, what I I did like I, th I think like two years ago. Um, I was an intern at Metropolis Studios in mm. in, in uh, England, and I would uh, get all these crazy percussion players and like guys with like weird medieval drums and things like that. And I just record them all, and then I sit there for like three or four months just processing them and just doing mm. really weird things to them like that don't make any sense. Mm. And then once I got them to that weird place, I would try and bring them back to a place that makes more sense. Mm -hmm. And I think. I, and I need to do this again because I ha I've been so busy. I haven't had a chance to really to you know, start I, <coughs> right. Yeah, yeah. But um, I think that's what I do kind of well as well. I, I'll try and take something something really weird and then bring it back to yeah. normality. But going through that journey kind of gives it its character. Mm -hmm. I find essentially that's. Uh, I was talking <coughs> to a friend of mine the other day, and it's like. 808s. I wonder, I wonder how many original sounding 808s right. are left on Earth because right. I know personally. I've, I've. I've had songs that got sampled, and I mixed the song again with that sample. That song got sampled. I mixed it again. I, I, we counted on one time four deep on on mm -hmm. one song within two years. Mm -hmm. So uh, you're just accelerating that process, taking it around. Right. That's pretty cool. That's pretty neat, man. I, I'm, I'm I'm glad that you're doing that because I think that that kind of creativity is much needed in the world of of like rock, for example. There is no rock anymore. It's just a bunch of pop bands and they put a loud guitar in it and they pretend like they're rock but Led Zeppelin could come along with a mandolin and one singer and have a heavy metal song right. with just a mandolin and a right, singer right, you know right. it's it's it, rock is is like hip hop it's one of those unique musical forms that just it's a lifestyle more than it is a right. a sound heavy <laughs> very, very wise they're very, very, very wise <laughs> very wise question for you the um very few people experience this sort of accelerated, you know, success that you've had. And to go from zero to a thousand takes a certain kind of stability. Yeah, from five to a thousand. <laughs> man had five. Severe yeah. training at uh, Thames Valley. No, that, no, no, we're going to go through that too. But it takes a certain kind of stability where you have to maintain what your beliefs are up against really strong personalities. The psychological part of producing is part of producing, isn't it? It's Big just part. as important. Right, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, I think a lot of producing even, like, there's obviously making tracks and then there's producing. Yeah. And I think people, especially young kids, they get um, well kind of, yeah, there's those two things a bit uh, kind confused. of confused, yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, Part of you know, part of it is definitely working hard and like building relationships and 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 doing all that stuff is just as important as getting a good kick sound, you know. Because yeah. if no one hears that kick sound, what's the point? And then the success actually helps with the psychological part because people come to the studio now with a different right. But then that also comes with its own drawbacks because people will come to you with like, okay, you've had a hit with that sound, give me that sound because I want to have right. a hit. Right. So you have to kind of I've be able to right. too in my profession. Right. So you have to kind of be able to talk them into different right. things, you know. Right, 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 right. As technology is changing and growing, um, how, are, how are you seeing that integrated into what you do? Uh, you, you mentioned you're doing live drums, but at the same time, you also mentioned how you, with the pr current technology, you managed to manipulate them into something new. Right. Is, that, is that part of your creative process? No, I, I mean, technology is everything to me. I feel like it's, uh, it's uh, so important to not just music, but like my whole life. Like I really appreciate technology just in every form, and and uh, I think staying up on that. And that's one of the things like, which I'm finding now. When you get more busy, you, I have less time to like really stay up on because it moves so quickly. You have to really be yeah. on it, you know. And mm -hmm. I really want to try and carve out more time to just really be, you know, aware of everything that's coming out and the things that are coming out in five years from now. And just, but I think you know, I love the fact that I can have a laptop. Most of my all of those songs you mentioned pretty much were done on my laptop or started on my laptop. Mm -hmm. The Nicki Minaj song I started on the train 
going to the studio, mm. the track. So, I mean, I love that freedom of being able to have an idea. It's, I think as long as technology just can get that idea into like a tangible form mm -hmm. as quickly and easy as possible, and mm -hmm. I think that keeps on getting better and better. Mm -hmm. I think you know, just use it for that, and not don't get caught up in just having the most stuff, yeah. but just get that idea into you know mm -hmm. tangible form. Really, mm -hmm. I think makes sense. Let me ask you this, Alex. Um, one of the things I've noticed about about you and and and, and there's a, there's a handful of other producers, and I've mentioned this on the show before, but I think I think you epitomize this uh, because you have such a mastery of technology and and, and, and the creative side of you there's there's a, a more seamless integration to the all the old traditional parts of record making for example 10 years ago somebody would bring me the mix they would wipe out anything and they just hand me where you know like no plugins no EQ right. nothing and, and and I'm supposed to start and create something so the mix process was interjected and added on to the production process but now because you're you, you're you're a, a good mixer I've heard your rough mixes. They're good. <laughs> and so now, instead of adding the mix onto the process, the mix is part of the production process in such a, a non-detachable way that, that someone working on your work can't just start from scratch. They have to literally start where you left off in order to complete the mix part of the production process, not complete the production process. Am I making any sense? Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. I mean, I'm, I use, I work with Manny. I know Manny's been on the show. Yeah, mm -hmm. Manny's incredible. A lot, and uh, <clears throat> a lot of it is like kind of taking my idea, which is why I use Manny a lot because he just knows me. Mm -hmm. Like, so taking that idea and just making it, I, I limit my stuff a lot. So, mm -hmm. like, making it slightly less limited, but still getting that effect. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I, I mean, I think. It definitely mixing wise, but some mixes like we literally just with Skylar Grey mm -hmm. that we just um, that premiered her single, uh, official single on Ryan Seacrest, and that's literally the, the mix out of my laptop. Is that right? Because we haven't finished mixing it. Love it. <laughs> so like, uh, there's no yeah. like, and it's like it's just literally. And I didn't spend any time mixing it. That's just the, pretty much the demo <laughs> that's on the radio. It's great. And we're gonna mix it, but like we just, I'm, I'm really picky about mixing, so I really wanna yeah. kind of get it right. But I think a lot of it is just. And that particular mix, I really wanted it to sound kind of bad. Like, mm. I wanted it to sound like, as mm. it's, it's funny as that sounds, but I really wanted it to sound like a, a fucked up record, right, like right. old, old, it's got crackle in it and all that stuff. Mm. So, um, but yeah, I, I really feel like, like you said, Dave, um, when, when it comes to me mixing, I really, it's adding, like, mixing is so much part of the production now, like, yeah. that I just want to be, like, kind of overseeing that part as well, because I feel like it's so important. Well, nowadays, like, like, like <laughs> let's say you, you pull up a keyboard sound, Ten years ago, you just go through a couple of presets and pick the one that was closest and closest, and then the mixer would take it the rest of the way. Now you actually start mixing on that keyboard right. sound, and if you change that sound, the whole production falls apart because everything is seamlessly integrated. No, I've done that. I mean, I work through the L2 a lot. I know I'm a big fan of the L2, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, if I'll start making a track, put that idea down. If I took that off, the L2 is so like integral to like a lot of the songs I do mm -hmm. that if you took it off it would just com sounds completely different the snare mm -hmm. sound different and, and you know it's just yeah I, I use the L2 to mix a lot also and sometimes about four or five years ago I would send to mastering one with and one without right. and it never came back better so now I just I just send it with the L2 on it right mm -hmm. and, uh, I think I think the Europeans particularly the British understood the value of L2 a little quicker than Americans did I noticed that uh, Geta and a couple of those guys tend to, to although he's not British, but uh, he, he plays one on TV, so that's close <laughs> enough. Uh, they tend to mix into the L2 right. a little bit to get to get a certain vibe and a certain sound, which is not that unusual in the analog world. That's that's the way people did it in, right. in the analog world. It's just, it was just harder to carry around a, a Neve console with you <laughs> as opposed to a laptop. That's that's pretty fascinating. That. Um, that 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 your formal education and and your production and your taste have all kind of found a way to coexist and and and, and all those components tend to stay creative with each other um, I noticed a couple of things too like um, when you're creating I notice a lot of producers there's a disconnect between the lyrics and melodies and vocals and the track. In other words, the creation process, you can tell, wasn't 
integrated in such a way that they amplify each other. I notice that you also like your vocals to be heard. You're not you're not a bury the vocal kind of guy. Right. And 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 then when I was thinking like, well, that's kind of cool. And then I started thinking when I was listening to all of, a lot of your songs, if the vocal went out, the track would be different. I mean, it, it's it's almost like you found a way to to. In my mind, I think of it as a mixer. I think of it as a battle between the track and the vocal. If I, right. the vocal's too loud, I've got an acapella, which nobody likes. If the track's too loud, I've got an instrumental, which nobody likes. But there's times when you're using the vocal almost like a tom fill, like, like the, the timing of, uh, of, of, of rhythm of the melody acts like a right. dun, 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 chorus. Right. You know, it's like you, you, you create a little tension rhythmically. And is that a conscious thing? Definitely. I mean, I'm, I'm a really stickler for rhythm in, in vocals. Mm -hmm. And I'll sit there. Literally, every, if you look at any of my mixes, like rough demos or anything, mm -hmm. you'll see pretty much every word just chopped up. And mm -hmm. I'll un, and log, I use, use logic. Mm -hmm. And I'll use the delay. And you can push it left or right, kind of nudge it. Mm -hmm. And I will. Um, Pretty much every word. So you place it to right. make sure those Yeah, and I come spend through. hours on that. And if you can tell when you listen to the records, because everything makes you feel something right. and everything is moving in a way. Um, That's pretty cool. Yeah, no, and it's very evident. I'm betting a thousand. I'm, I've got to ask them. Roll, a thousand, man. I'm roll, 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 roll. Okay. How do you, like, like as, as, a, as a mixer, uh, it took me about five years to be able to integrate my influences into my work because either I sounded like them or I wish I sounded like them. I didn't know how to in, in, integrate my influences into into my work. Um, who are some of your influences and, and, and how, how have you found a way to integrate it into your work? Because your influences aren't immediately obvious to me. To be honest, I don't... I listen to a lot of music, but I'm not that guy that can name every single band that came from the 60s, 70s and 80s. Like, mm -hmm. I'm more influenced by life, I think. Like, I, like now that I live in LA, I'm, I'm, a lot of the time I'll just have my laptop out in my garden and just be making ideas in the garden, mm -hmm. kind of. And it's, it's more of that. Like, I definitely listen to sounds more than specific bands. You know, I'm into certain bands now and stuff, but I, I don't really think I get influenced by them specifically. It's kind of weird. Like, I, I'm just more influenced by, like, how I'm feeling on that day. Yeah. It's more emotional for I me, I think. That. Yeah, and, and it's kind of how it is. There's a limit to BPMs in the garden, you know. You can only get up <laughs> to about 80 BPMs working in the garden. <laughs> you have to run down to the freeway to get above 80 BPMs. I don't know. That's interesting. So basically what you're saying is is all those influences growing up, uh, uh, the, uh, the child influence, they just they just kind of got in some kind of melting pot, yeah, and, I mean, and they just kind of creep out when you need them, but they're not... I'm not a big fan of Rick Rubin. Um, you know, there's certain people I'm, I'm big fans of. You know, I definitely have influences, but I think like my dad used to listen to like a lot of so much dub, like old mm -hmm. reggae stuff, and I used to like play it super loud when I was like going to bed and stuff like that. He's like the worst father ever <laughs> <laughs> in terms of like like parenting skills. But um, they like I used to listen. <laughs> <laughs> so um, no, but I'm kind of you know in those things. I don't know what I was listening to. There's like just people pretty much in a room just jamming for like ten hours, and he right. was like a tape, a tape of it and just play that. So, yeah, so, so I'm probably for, just the emotion and the feeling right. has, has kind of creeped into your psyche rather than actual parts and right. I, I really embrace just how everything feels. I'm not really, yeah. I don't care how it gets there. I just want it to feel right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It seems like nowadays, it seems like 10 years ago, you could get by with just good beats and good sounds and good tracks and good melodies. Now you have to provide three or four minutes of escape from a world around us that a lot of people aren't real, real comfortable and happy in. You know, right. There's a lot of poverty, there's a lot of war, there's a lot of things and just a kick drum and some rap ain't gonna do it now. You gotta have some something emotionally tied up with that kick drum and with that rap Definitely. and with those vocals. And also, you know, as a consumer, what I find interesting about what you do is just that your music's interesting. Like, it, it's interesting. Like, there's something different going on. There's layers. He, he, he creates... He creates what, what first listen stuff, second listen, third is like the layers of an onion. As you listen to Alex's stuff, you hear things like these songs, we've heard them a lot. And when I went back and listened to them again, I heard new stuff, new stuff that... Absolutely. And I think for the lay person, they're just going, wow, that is just made different. And, and I equate that to better than right. a lot of this other stuff because I just think where you come from is so unique, what influences you is, is unique. But the also thing is, I think, and you know, I know you're an athlete back in the day, you were a soccer guy, right? Barely an athlete, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, part of performing like that is about 
performance and pushing the envelope. And you, and you have to have, be a little bit fearless to push the envelope. Right. Otherwise, it just comes off as safe. And I, I find in the interviews I've seen about you and what I've read about you and so on and so forth, you're not interested in safe. Right. No, that's definitely a good point. I definitely, I like taking risks. I think anybody that does anything different has to take risks. And I'm definitely not afraid to do that. Right. And I don't know where that comes from. That's just how I am. Some people have it. Right. Some people don't. Wow. That's, I think that's the first show I've watched, her of ours. That was pretty impressive. I, I, I liked a couple of the questions I asked. I, 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 that was pretty cool. Alex, man, can't thank him enough. And uh, Ryan and uh, uh, Mark. What's Mark's last name? Mark Jordan. Mark Jordan. Gerald Thompson. Gerald Thompson, man. Thank all you guys. That was, that was one of my favorite interviews. I, I learned, like I told you, I learned a lot. Next week we've got uh, a situation with uh, Alex where we asked some 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 questions I think you're going to really find exciting and interesting, too. But today... Batter's Box. Batter's Box. Let's oh. roll that graphic and introduce our guest. My good friend... Go ahead. Oh, I was waiting for the music to die down. Talk to it. we got to have some music on the show. There is music, but you just keep going. Oh. Yeah. My good friend Claudio Quinney is on the show today. Uh, hey. Glad to have you, Claudio. It's been Thank a second. You. Thanks for coming. Everybody, I got to tell you, I, I've been saving this. Claudio doesn't know, but Claudio has a reputation for mixing barefooted. Yep. Oh, no joke. Uh, you never see Claudio in the studio with shoes on. Well, well, why, why is that? that? <laughs> um, I don't know, more comfortable barefoot. Got it. Simple as that, man. Oh, cool. Uh, I, I can feel so. the bass. You, know, yeah. you, you get that, a connection. And actually, that's something no, JJP true. Yeah. said that you, know, yeah. you feel with your body yeah. and you hear with your body. Are you being so. serious? I'm, I'm dead serious, yeah. 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 You, you know, you, you know, there's gonna be a few thousand people walking around barefoot and getting yeah. electrocuted <laughs> thanks to you. Uh, if they have a Drew Adams moment and spill <laughs> water in the control room, they're gonna get electrocuted. <laughs> so, Omarion, Boys to Men, I love your Boys to Men record. Thank uh, you. The Omarion record's good too. Bone Thugs, we were both. I think we we're both on the same album, and uh, that always scares me when I'm on a record with you. you oh yeah, whatever. <laughs> Nas, I like. Uh, uh, but. You're, you're, you're probably known to a lot of us for the work you've done with Tupac. I mean, right. you've done so many Tupac records. Uh, hopefully, in a, in a few months, we'll get into some of that. But um, That's got to be, that had to be quite an experience. Just it, it the was, historical context. Exactly. And, and, and it was really, I mean, I got the call for it at like 3 o'clock in the morning after I worked like two days straight, and I almost turned it down. I almost was like, QD called me and was like, Dude, the engineer, God, it's not working out. Please come down. He was like, dude, I've been up for two days. Like, you know, okay. I was like, please. I'm like, all right, cool. You know, and it turned into, this was ten albums. Yeah, this was twelve years ago, and I'm so I just got a text yesterday for you know mixing a couple more songs. It keeps, keeps, keeps going. Wow. You know what I mean? Can you imagine if I would have turned that down? Wow. I mean, <laughs> you just <laughs> never know, man. You know, well, totally. Add a little down. class to the show. Uh, introduce Batter's Box in German. Can you do that? Oh. <laughs> it's been a while, huh? Yeah, it's been a while. All right. you give me something easier. To do. <laughs> you want to do it in Ebonics, Herb? Uh, wow. Introduce Better's Box in Ebonics? No, I want you to do it in Southern Slack. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, right y'all. Do, do it in Pickerwood. <laughs> All right, y'all. <laughs> Come on, let's get to uh, it. Let's throw some right, pictures in Claudia. Are you ready? Huh? Are you ready? I'm, I'm uh, on. Are you ready? Um, yeah, That's sure. Something for are this. you ready? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I had to switch I'm, over. <laughs> Claudio, Claudio, I'm here to interpret. I, <laughs> that, right. No, I'm usually pretty good with No, it's just, I'm here yeah. with you. It wasn't your fault. It's the Peckerwood coming up. No, uh, go ahead and throw. I'm ready, no. I guess. Piss ain't. You know what a piss ain't is? Yeah, I do. You know what a grotchke is? Yeah, I, I used it this morning. <laughs> do you ever say, as your mama name? No. No, that's hey, now you lost me. Kings of Leon, man, going going down south. Some All right, man, I'm gonna I'm 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 hit you with the. Uh, everybody knows the batter's box. Let's just jump in. I'm gonna hit you okay. with with. You give me uh, give me the EQ first, and then the compressor second. Okay. Acoustic guitar. Whoa. Um, the EQ probably the pull deck. Love it a lot. And uh, EMI TG 1969, oh, whatever yeah. it's called. I love that one. Too many numbers on those. Yeah, things. yeah, it has a million numbers. Snare. Uh, snare. I love a lot of the URS stuff. The URS 10 band Neve and uh, the H compressor, the Waves. Ooh, I love yeah, that compressor. Yeah. Uh, synth piano. Synth piano. Um, EQ. I love the URS Motown. I use that on a lot of things. And uh, 
compressor, the original LA two A that Digidesign made, or or what was the bomb company? factory? Bomb factory. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Uh, synth strings. Synth strings. Um, the Puig uh, Fairchild and EQ. Oh, depending what it is, probably could be the URS Motown again, or the the Neve that they make, the the N series. Yeah. Love those. Cool. Um, synth bass. Synth bass. It's like a Moog bass sound. Um, the Duende channel strip compression and EQ. Wow. Yeah, love that. That remind, made remind that made that working in the box work for me when Duende came out. Remind me to ask you about that yeah. in a minute. Uh, electric guitar. Electric guitar. The uh, CLA LA three. EQ again the URS N series. CL one B. Is that what you're trying to say? That, no, they the the CLA LA three A. Oh, Chris oh, Lord Chris is, yeah. yeah. Uh, sorry, Chris. Uh, your, your stereo bus. <laughs> yeah. My stereo bus. Um, that's actually the one thing that's not in the box for me. So well, you have you nothing mean. in there. I, I, I usually have the decapitator on there. That's what I use a lot. That or uh, Phoenix. Love that. It's not really compression or EQ. It's a little bit, uh, whatever it is, but it okay. works. <laughs> okay. Uh, kick drum. Kick drum. Add wind. Channel strip. Oh, okay. Yeah. And um, do you do you sub your drums into an aux? Yes, I usually do. And what do you put on that aux? Um, depending what kind, if it's rock or hip hop, but you give me give me rock first and then hip hop. Rock the API twenty five hundred. Um, if I put an EQ on there, I, actually I usually use the decapitator with that. Okay. Not not really EQ, but that, it has that little the boost the low end boost you can yeah. do with it. That's amazing. And then uh, vocals. Vocals. Just lead vocals. Uh, the EMI 124, I think it's called, for compression. Mm -hmm. And then EQ, depending depending how much it needs, uh, almost always use the URS Motown for that, just because I like the real Motown EQs that you have at Larrabee. Yeah, and I kind of miss not yeah. having that, but yeah. the plugin well, comes the pretty, damn, has, yeah. pretty, pretty damn close, yeah. I gotta say. It has to carry. Do you do anything different with background vocals? Um, yeah, absolutely. Well, give us that one then, and that'll be the last one. Um, backgrounds, uh, usually the Fairchild, the Puig, and probably like two or three different EQs, anywhere from Pool Text to um, Duende. Uh, wow. um, uh, uh, what are the green ones called? <laughs> the ones you, also, the, all you always use? The green what? Uh, the green plugins. Okay. Oh, uh, I'm on three uh, hours Mac of sleep. DSP. Yeah, Mac DSP. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I was, trying to, I, was, I was in my Charlie Rose moment. I was trying to yeah, yeah. think of the next question instead of listening to the. Well, you answer. know, I got on my plug-in list, and the EQ list is like this big. I so you like. <laughs> I know. I know. Uh, the Duende. Uh, you know, I just I just don't use that, but not because of anything other than I'm just not familiar with it. It's, you're pretty happy with it. You know it. what? I, uh, when it first came out, I was over at Encore. All working on the SSL, and one of the SSL reps brought one over. I forgot what we were working on, and he was like, "Try it out." And it took us a minute to get it to work, and then once we got it to work, I kind of a beat it against the board. And it's not exactly like the board, but it's it's just as good. And well, and that was the first saying. time I was still on. Um, that was the first time where I was like, "Wow, I think I could now I can mix at home," because I was such an SSL guy. I grew up on SSLs, mm -hmm. and once. Once I got that plug in, I was like, wow, I can take this home and keep working on it. Or I can, you know, I can get the same results in the box mm -hmm. that, uh, that I can get on a console. That's really like the first time. That's the first time where I was like, oh, cool, I'm good mm -hmm. now. You know what I mean? When you, it's kind of like the missing link. When you sit down and, and, and select a particular plug in for a particular sound, at this point in time, you were one of the first guys to kind of go into the box. Right. Uh, do you, like, like you and I are similar because of the language thing. Like, uh, like at some point you had to stop thinking in German and start thinking right, in English. Exactly. Do you think in plug-in now instead of analog? Yes, absolutely. So you're not thinking, what did I do in the analog world? What plug-in will emulate that? You just think, what plug-in can I'm I use? I'm thinking plug-ins because yeah. plug-ins to me have like their own character. Like, yeah. like even though it looks like a pull deck, doesn't mean it has to sound like a pull deck. I don't mm -hmm. care that it doesn't sound like a pull deck. I just want it to have a sound. And, and they definitely have their own characters. Some stuff I do that I used to do for years, 
on on the SSLs. Like I have my booty channel, which <laughs> your booty <laughs> channel. <laughs> which I'm, I'm over, <laughs> I'm over, but well, I was, you know, <laughs> which is I want to see if Drew wanted to use that plug in. But, but it's basically like <laughs> <laughs> it's basically a Pultec 60 hertz cranked all the way into an LA 2A cranked all the way on a on a scent on a, a parallel comp compression. Anything that needs more low end, you dial mm -hmm. that in. It just gives you a big tight you know, ass. There's mm -hmm. no other way I just don't know other way to say it. And I was able to copy that in the box and it actually works. Yeah, uh, I, I remember the day that, that, that I guess it was version eight came out. Mm -hmm. Is that some kind of subtle signal? Well no, I just wanted to see if if Claudia would stick around for uh for a corner office with us sure. and ask a few questions. Yeah, no well, problem. Then let's wrap up Batter's Box. We'll roll the graphic. Thank okay, you very big much. Big <laughs> thank you. Claudio. I say you hit a couple out the park. Thank you. Absolutely. That was great. That was great. Absolutely. And now let's, uh, Drew, we got uh, four or five minutes for four or five questions. Yeah. So Claudio, jump in, too. Um, questions uh, this is regarding Alex's interview with you, Dave. Um, from who? From Bob Wells, uh, Brandon Wells, a new, a new viewer. Um, what is the weirdest fusion of genres or instruments that you've worked with? What is the what? The weirdest fusion of genre or instruments that you've worked with. Wow, that's a great question, Bob. Uh, I, think he, I think I finally got stumped. Ooh. Let me think about that, Bob. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to either give you a question before I uh, answer before the end of the show, or I'll answer you tomorrow. That's All a right. great question. To, uh, from Monty Parag Paragon Mixing. Uh, this a question about plugins. Uh, Dave, have you ever used, or Dave and Claudio, have you ever used Mic Modeler or Waves Vocal Writer? Have you tried them? What do you think about them? Uh, I've tried Mic Modeler when it first came out, which was a long time ago. Yeah. And kind of wasn't, to me, like if I don't initially feel it right away, I kind of forget about it. Yeah. And that was one of them I was like, eh, it's okay. It didn't really do what I thought it should do. Uh, I like. I'm lazy. I love the waves vocal, uh, mm -hmm. the waves rider thing. I actually use that quite a lot. Yeah, and the bass yeah, rider's yeah, good too. It actually works. Yeah, it's one of those like. On vocal model, mm -hmm. on the mic modeler, um, Monty, if uh, uh, I felt the same way Claudio did, and then a friend of mine, I can't remember who it was, said, "Well, don't use it as a mic modeler. Just think of it as an EQ." Right. And I started trying that, and I found some really good uses for it. Like, like for example, if you wanted a little 5K boost, you'd you'd use the the 414 right. model. So if you think of it, this is just me talking now. I'm not talking for all engineers. Uh, if you think of it as a way to get a different type of EQ, I think you're going to find some uses for it. If you if you want to actually have one mic emulate another, uh, depending on your attitude and your expectations, you might not be completely happy. Drew, one more for our guest, if you will. Yeah, for sure. Um, people are real curious about how you treat uh, Tupac's vocals. If you can elaborate on that a little bit. Um, oh, great you know what? Great question. Um, they were actually recorded extremely well. And, uh, you know, and once again, like the most important part is the performance. Like, that's the one thing we usually can fix, no matter how mm -hmm. many plugins or whatever we throw at it. And the thing with Pac Man, you just got to let him do its thing. Uh, of course, I compress it, but not, not as heavy as What's you would think. What's your go to think. compressor? For, for Pac, if I do it in the box, it would be the 1176, the CLA. Chris. Use it in yeah. the blue stripe or the, the black blue stripe, yeah. yeah. And you know what? Fairly, I, I fairly slow attack, fairly fast ask. release. Okay. You know, okay. Uh, four to one. You know, and the needle packs, but it's not. It, it just pushes it forward, basically. And what's your EQ? Um, could be the Duende, it could be Mac DSP. Not it was like very, very simple. The the yeah. E6 or the P6. The the E6 okay. and. Um, with Pac, like one thing to kind of get the old school thing going with him, you got to put H3000 on him. You know, like just get the, the harmonizer thing going just a oh, little okay. bit underneath. It just gives it a wide kind you of sound. You know what's interesting? It's, kind of, it's kind of a signature thing for him. Like it doesn't sound right when We had Mike not Dean on. on the show who does Kanye and right. the, 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 the know, very, similar, very similar approach to the vocals. Yeah. Less is more is yeah. basically what you're telling yeah. us. Let it be, let it be yeah. real. And, they, and they've really been, you know, uh, the way they record it is pretty much, from what I hear, it's yeah. U87. He doubles, he doubles his vocals, so, yeah. so other than the 3000, you don't really use many effects, right? No, no, just try to keep it kind of, like, try to keep it kind of even, kind of push it up front a little bit. That's, when that's about it. trying to push it up front, or is that a volume thing or a function of the EQ? It's a function of the compression, actually. Uh, uh -huh. To me, compression actually... I knew that. <laughs> I watched the me, Jack Joseph <laughs> Week show. For me, that's what uh, compression uh, does. Like, like, yeah. 
compressions are my favorite EQs and my favorite toys in a way. Like, like I can really, like a lot of times if I go for color, I go for a compressor instead of an EQ. I, I kind of learned that. That's something I'm yeah. still not, uh, like you and I were talking on the phone. Right. I, like Jack Joseph mentioned that also. I, I, I do it, but I'm not, I do it kind of accidentally. I don't have an exact knowledge I, of what's going to happen. I just have I, to try I, it. I don't think I totally mastered it. A lot of times it's happy accidents, which yeah. is always cool. Well, I like that's good that. to hear. You know what I mean? Uh, sometimes I know and it works, and sometimes I think I know and it doesn't work, and uh -huh. then you try something else. What are you right? What are you listening for when you put a compressor on on Pox vocal to make it come forward? Are you listening for the mid range to kind of increase yeah, a little bit? Definitely, definitely mid range thing, like a warm mid range thing. Like, yeah. One thing I learned from you is the the three K, three to four K uh, side chain compression. I oh, use that yeah. a lot on yeah. a lot of people. That's that yeah. allows you to push up it the gets, good stuff yeah. and take out the exactly, bad stuff. Exactly, exactly. That gets Claudio, you halfway there. <laughs> man, I, I know you, you drove in from uh, Montana today, yeah, and I yeah. really appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> oh, dude, my pleasure. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I tell you what, man. Will you come back another time Absolutely. and spend a little Anytime. more time with us? And we'll love we'll, we'll, we'll do an expanded man. version of some of this. No but problem. thank you so much, man. No and, and I um, appreciate it, bro. And Thank a shout you. out to Brendan and his manager, Absolutely. Leon. Absolutely. He's over in the corner <laughs> watching say it right? carefully. Uh, did I say it right, Brendan? Yeah, there we go. Good. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for uh, supporting Claudio. Drew? Yes, sir. Mediocre job, but uh, maybe Always. you'll get better Drew, next week. Always a man. Don't listen Always man. a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Drew was Thanks, sitting Claudio. here. Hey, guys, Drew was sitting here a minute ago and uh, knocked his water over right into an electrical outlet. You already ratted me out earlier. Claudio put his shoes back on. It was like a it was like a, a Pensado's Place moment. Like, yeah. Only we can have, right, it's Herb? For, it's for the gag reel. But, but, but before we go, a couple quick things. Uh, make sure you hit us on Facebook. Thank you for your comments and look at you, the YouTube page. Uh, your comments count, as we talked about last week. So keep them coming. Keep those likes and subscriptions up and, and, and all that stuff. Twitter, obviously, is where you can find us. Um, and uh, a couple quick thanks. Uh, Vintage King, of course. Thanks, Ooh. Alex, in the, in the Alex, chat room. Good job. Secondly, um, we've got a part two of Alex the Kid. want to thank him, obviously, which we've done a couple times a show. But stay tuned for that. There'll be more info there. Um, Come back next week. We have some good stuff for you. And Dave, take us home. We have Alex the Kid and Alex not the Kid today. We did. We had two Alexes. Yeah, I thought that was funny. But, yeah, but you're about the only one. Uh, well, you're not paid. <laughs> he's paid to laugh. Why didn't Drew laugh? He's paid to laugh. Because he's, he's I'm wired in. Drew is the, egg, right he's wet. Drew is the Ed McMahon of the, of the <laughs> Pensada's play. you got to roll. Okay, guys, listen. Thanks a lot. Um, uh, I'm stepping up my Twitter, so... Uh, I'll see you over there. I'm starting to get the hang of that. Getting, I've already up to speed pretty good on a lot of the Facebook questions. But uh, thank you so much for being with us, and um, hope you learned a little bit today. And uh, I can't thank you guys enough for all the support. And, and every once in a while, I get an email or a Facebook from one of you guys, and it just makes all of this worthwhile. And uh, I appreciate the way that you treat our guests on the internet. It's kind of hard to get good guests when you making fun of them or saying you know they don't know what they're talking about but our audience doesn't do that herb they no. really support the guests and they really Fantastic. sincerely have good questions and, it's, and the criticisms when you do criticize the guests they're 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 done with respect and we, we just can't thank you enough because that makes it so easy to get the guests you want to hear so great day great show had a lot of fun well i said i'll answer your question tomorrow bob uh drew make a note i want to answer bob's question next week so thanks guys